And you know what? I, what was that? Okay. James. Today we are talking about Stunfisk, which is a pretty forgotten about but underrated Pokemon in my opinion, but most people don't really give it a second thought. Be honest, some of y'all when you saw the title and thumbnail for this video were like, oh yeah, Stunfisk has a Galarian form. I'm sure some of y'all like forgot about Stunfisk altogether, and that's just that on that. that. Poor Stunfisk isn't even that bad. I think it's actually pretty viable in lower tiers. You know, pivot in with static, set up hazards and spread status, be annoying and just tell people with its funny expression <laughs> on its face. There's definitely some people out there who appreciate and love Stunfisk because in Generation 8, Stunfisk was one of the few Pokemon who were blessed with the brand new regional form and a second chance of glory. And unlike Galarian Darmanitan that needed to be banned to Ubers for how overpowered it was, Galarian Stunfisk is just a flop in comparison. Literally. But let's look at the positives. Galarian Stunfisk goes from a ground electric to ground steel, which is objectively a much better defensive typing, and getting double the amount of resistances and immunities is definitely to Galarian Stunfisk's benefit. Galarian Stunfisk's stats are swapped around to be more of a physical tank as opposed to a special tank, which is arguable whether that's a good or a bad thing, because Galarian Stunfisk's move pool is very disappointing. Like, for example, its strongest physical steel type stab is Metal Claw. <laughs> However, I did find one niche for Galarian Stunfisk that it has, and that's the fact that it can trap Pokemon in with Snap Trap, in conjunction with Yawn, you can you know force Pokemon to fall asleep, safely bring in a setup sweeper as stuff falls asleep thanks to Steel Beam, and as you can see here, Charizard is able to use Gigalith as setup fodder, which normally Gigalith hard counters Charizard in lower tiers, but thanks to Galarian Stunfisk's supportive capabilities, I'm able to set up a belly drum on Gigalith and just sweep outright thanks to my speed boost from Scale Shot and the Blaze Fire Punch and Acrobatics. So yeah, that was a very good demonstration of Galarian Stunfisk, but otherwise, this Pokemon was done so dirty. I haven't even mentioned its Mimicry ability! Galarian Stunfisk learns zero terrain setting moves to make use of its Mimicry ability, and even with Dynamax, why would you Dynamax a Galarian Stunfisk? The only move that Stunfisk even learns that can even set terrain in the first place is literally its signature move, Snap Trap which is a grass type move for some reason as opposed to, I don't know, a physical steel type move that Galarian Stunfisk desperately needs. I don't understand why Reggie Lucky is allowed to have a signature trapping move that is both stab and significantly stronger than snap trap, but Galarian Stunfisk, the trapping Pokemon, has horrible signature move that's just like, Galarian Stunfisk is just rather disappointing and I sort of gave up on them for a very long time, but in the Isle of Armor DLC, Galarian Stunfisk was given Terrain Pulse, which is a special attack. You know, Galarian Stunfisk's lower offensive stat, but hey, at least it's something to make use of the Mimicry ability. And that's all a crazy bitch like me needs to build a team around it. Especially after getting several requests asking to use Galarian Stunfisk, it's about time I built a team around Galarian Stunfisk. So yes, today we are using a Terrain Pulse Galarian Stunfisk meme team. Also, if you sat through all this exposition, I just wanted to let you know that you are awesome for listening to me ramble about why Galarian Stunfisk is trash. Now, before we get into the battles, if you guys enjoy the narrated sword and shield battling content and want to support the channel and what I do here on YouTube, the best way to show your support is to leave a like on the video, watch until the end of the video, and maybe share the video with a friend who might enjoy it as well. Also, big shout outs to those who left a super thanks on my recent video. It's a new feature YouTube added recently where you can show extra financial support to creators you really enjoy. It's, of course, not necessary whatsoever. So just watching really means the world to me, but the option is there and I very much appreciate it. So as you can see by my team, we do have the Galarian Stunfisk, the legend themselves, and we have our triple terrain setters and Rillaboom, Pincurchin, and Tapu Lele. Crack. I decided not to use a Misty Terrain setter just because Misty Terrain doesn't boost your damage at all, so I figured it'd be kind of useless. And then we have Clawitzer and Dusclops for further support. So James has a really cool team. They have Dragapult, Colossal, Urshifu, Rillaboom, Incineroar, and Moultrie. So I'm not really too sure what my opponent's planning on with their team. Uh, maybe they're planning on having Urshifu and Incineroar overwhelm me with their muscular bodies and distract me so they can pull the W. Oh yes, daddy! But without further ado, let's get into this battle against James. So surprisingly, my opponent turn one doesn't lead off with Colossal Dragapult. Like, <gasps> I can't believe it. They're trying to change up their game plan. I was kind of amazed at that. So I let off with Clawitzer, expecting like the Colossal lead, right? But they lit off with Rillaboom Moltres. Now this is like the worst case scenario for me because the grassy terrain being set up is going to change my Stunfisk type to grass. And now this Moltres is going to Dynamax and they want my Stunfisk gone. They're like, I see a fun Pokemon on your team. No fun for you today, sweetie. So I figured that they're going to go for a max Airstream. And I'm gonna go for Protect turn one. This was kind of greedy because they could have went for a nasty plot turn one, but honestly, like, 
I don't know. I just got the vibes that they didn't want me to have fun. And, you know, I was right because they go for a grassy glide as opposed to fake out into my Clawitzer doing a big chunk of damage. But because of her window barrier, we were able to eat it up reasonably well. And now they're going to go for the max airstream, hitting my stun fist through, through the protect, doing about a quarter of our health. Which kind of sucks for us because, you know, now Moltres can just annihilate us even with Dynamax. And we are still grass typing at the moment. But thankfully, we are able to activate our weakness policy through Protect because max moves are so broken. They go through Protect. So the only way to take advantage of that is to proc your weakness policy through Protect. I go for Water Pulse doing a pathetic amount of damage because I don't have much special attack investment, if any at all, on this Clawlister, if I recall correctly. So, yeah, this Clawlister is mostly meant for support. But now I'm going to switch out my Clawitzer and bring in my Pinkurchin because I know that the Max Airstream is incoming into my uh, Galarian Sunfist. So I'm going to set up that Electric Terrain to change up the typing on my opponent right here. We're going to set up that Electric Surge and then Mimicry is going to activate, changing into an Electric type. And now, oh yeah, I Dynamax my Sunfist. Uh, my opponent's going to go for the Max Airstream into my now Electric type Sunfist as we're able to eat that up like so easily. Like we just snacked that for breakfast. And now, I think the Villaboom just goes for a knockoff or U-turn. I forgot what Villaboom goes for right now. This battle is really, really old. <laughs> this is like the first time watching back this battle in like a year. They just go for Grassy Glide once again, trying to knock out the uh, Clawless, which is understandable. But we're able to you know switch the terrains on them, go for the Max Lightning into the Moltres, and that's able to knock it out from that range of health. So we're able to deal with my opponent's Dynamax with Dynamax Galarian Stun Fisk after proccing our weakness policy off the opponent's Dynamax. So that is a really good... I mean, you can really take advantage of the type flexibility with Galarian Sunfisk if you play really smart. And now they're going to bring in the Urshifu, and they're going to go... Oh, I go for Sucker Punch to break a potential Focus Ash with my Pink Urchin, which is why I have Sucker Punch, basically. Also because, in case... Actually, never mind. I was going to say in case my uh, Galarian Stunfisk is Psychic-type, but it's always going to be Electric-type if I'm bringing in, <laughs> like, my Stunfisk with the Pink Urchin, so that, that's a dumb thought. Now they're going to bring in Colossal, so they actually still brought Colossal for some reason. They're going to go for Close Combat as we're able to tank it really well because, you know, we're Dynamax Stunfisk. Surging Strikes would not have killed me either because we're currently Electric Typing. And now Max Lightning is going to Electrocute this Urshifu, knocking it out. And at this point, I think we just win, right? Like, <laughs> what can my opponent do? We still have Dynamax Stunfisk. We have the Pincursion God himself sitting out right now. They're going to bring in the Rillaboom, changing me into a Grass-type with a Colossal out on the field. So actually, they might be able to knock me out right now because now I'm actually a Grass-type. And I do believe Colossal does outspeed me because Galarian Stunfisk is really, really slow. But yeah, the Mimicry is going to change us into the Grass-typing. And uh, I'm going to switch out Vincursion right now and bring out my Tapu Lele because I'm like, no way am I going to stay for Grass type right now. I'm going to switch to Tapu Lele, changing into Psychic type. And now I won't take super effective damage from Heat Wave, so that's good for us. We're going to change into Psychic type. And they actually go for a knockoff. So I'm like, oops, I guess I'm still dead, huh? So um, yeah, they go for knockoff and heat wave, and that's going to knock out my Sunfisk, which is really unfortunate for me because I thought Sunfisk, I thought I was really big brain with that play, but my opponent said, no, get the Sunfisk out of my face. So unfortunately, Sunfisk is going to go down, but I'm going to bring back my Pinkurchin, who is Life Orb. So I do think I might potentially be able to clean up this game. So I'm going to bring in Pinkurchin. And now my Tapu Lele, I am actually a really supportive Tapu Lele. So they tried to go for Fake Out. Maybe they timed out. I don't know what happened there. But either way, we're going to Speed Swap and make my Pinkurchin into a super speed Pokemon. Go for the Scald into the Colossal, one-shotting them. And yeah, down goes the Colossal to the Scald. And now it's Tapu Lele and Pinkurchin. And I think I still have Clawitzer. Do I? I might. I think I still have Clawitzer in the back and they just forfeit. So we're able to defeat our opponent thanks to uh, using my opponent's Dynamax against them, basically getting our weakness policy and then bringing in Pickerchin and just one-shotting it with a Max Lightning. So hopefully you all enjoyed that battle and uh, it was a pretty good showcasing of, uh, you know, Glarian Sunfist's flexibility. And I do believe this is Wolfie's team. I could be wrong. A uh, normie girl. <laughs> nice name. But yeah, hopefully you all enjoyed that battle and let's move on to the next one opponent's team is Porygon Z, Clefairy, Incineroar, Rillaboom, Urshifu, the Furry Fire Water Grass Core, and then Regieleki. So I do want to mention that the vast majority of the battles in this video are really old battles before Restricted Legendaries ruined the VGC metagames. So we are challenged by Alphonse, who has a pretty cute trainer card. I think that's actually the Ice Stadium background, so we actually get to battle in the Ice Stadium for once. And this is really cool <laughs> because um, Pokemon Sword doesn't have access to the Ice Stadium, so it's like a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Yeah, so we're going to lead off with Galarian Stunfisk and Clawitzer. 
And I know my opponent's more than likely gonna go for the max strike turn one into Clawwizard, so I'm gonna make a hard switch into my Dust Flops, expecting them to go for the turn one Dynamax with their Porygon Z, because that's commonly what Porygon Z does, as they're gonna Frisk see their life for Porygon Z and EV like Clefairy, not that that's really important information. And now they're gonna go for the Ally Switch turn one. I was expecting Follow Me or Helping Hand, but you know, Ally Switch is something else. And they're gonna go for Max Strike, we're able to evade it with Dust Flops, and now we're gonna go for the Earth Power into the Porygon Z slot with the Ally Switch, and it wouldn't have done any damage anyways because of Dynamax and Friend Guard, so not really a big deal. My opponent's gonna go for the Follow Me right here this time around, so they have Follow Me and Ally Switch because they are a scary person. They have no fear. People who run both of those moves are scary, and they cannot be trusted. So we are able to face tank a Max Darkness because they didn't click Helping Hand. If they clicked Helping Hand right there, um, we would have been dead for sure, but because my opponent has ally switch and follow me, they probably don't have helping hand, so that's good for us. Now I'm going to go for another earth power into the Clefairy. I actually do carry Steel Beam, but of course Steel Beam does, Steel Beam does do half your HP, so I didn't want to go for that. And I just want to slowly chip down this Clefairy and solve the Dynamax. So we're able to set up Tricker right here, and now it is time to Dynamax the Galarian Stunfist, the legend themselves. The whole, the thumbnail Pokemon for this video. We're going to Dynamax our giant trap Pokemon, our Galarian Sunfisk. And this cry is so menacing. Like if you saw a Dynamax Galarian Sunfisk, you would fear for your life. Like this Pokemon is menacing. So um, yeah, my opponent's gonna go for follow me one more time, but because they're Dynamax now, I can actually go for my Steel type stab without fear of losing half my HP. So my opponent is gonna allow me to go for the Bulldoze and we're gonna lower the speed of Sunfisk. But more importantly, we're gonna activate our weakness policy. I know self rock weakness policy is a pretty boring strategy, but there is a lot of ways we self rock weakness policy on this team, and I think some of y'all are going to like the text I have on this team. So I'm going to go for the max steel spike into the Clefairy just to knock it out because I figured they go for follow me one last time, or ally switch, whatever. I just want to get rid of this annoying ass Clefairy before it makes me mad. So, um, Clefairy! I'm going to go down to the max steel spike, and now my opponent is going to finish off my dust pops with the Max Darkness because they didn't think Galarian Stunfisk was going to do anything to them, so they are underestimating Galarian Stunfisk, and that's just the truth. So down goes Dusclops, which is fine with me because we were already able to set up Trick Room, and we were able to go for Bulldoze, and Stunfisk actually synergizes really well with the Dusclops because with Max Steel Spike and Max Quake boosts, you can actually survive for a really, really long time and go for like Pain Split Nightshades and really tilt the opponent, so that's a pretty cool combination we have on this team is Max Quake Steel Spike with Dusclops, which is already really hard to KO. But yeah, they're going to bring in the Rillaboom right here. We're going to actually change it to Electric type because we brought in Pink Kirchen, but then the Rillaboom is going to set up the Grassy Terrain, so we're actually going to transform types once again. <laughs> So Grassy Surge is going to get set up, and now we're going to Mimicry into a Grass type, which is kind of funny. And now the Dynamax and the Porygon Z is going to wear off. So now its offensive presence has went down tremendously. But I'm actually going to decide to switch out my Pincurchin, expecting a Fake Out, and I'm going to bring in my Clawitzer, just because I want to be able to reset the terrain. And my opponent is going to go for the Fake Out into my Pincurchin, but thankfully we're able to pivot into Clawitzer. And now I can go for the Max Overgrow. And this is actually off of Terrain Pulse, because Terrain Pulse changes into the um, Max move, which... Whichever terrain is active, of course, it changes it into that type. So Max Overgrow off of Terrain Pulse, gonna one-shot the Porygon Z at plus two special attack, which is, you know, good enough for Galarian Stunfisk, right? It's just barely able to do damage with plus two stab max moves. So now they're gonna bring in my daddy Incineroar. They're gonna intimidate me, but that's okay, because we're actually a special attacking Stunfisk because Terrain Pulse is a special attack, so intimidate doesn't matter. And now I'm gonna switch back out of the Cloud because I'm not trying to take a grassy glide, even though I do carry the Rendo Berry, I still just wanna play it safe. Bring in my Pink Urchin, also because I wanna set up the Electric Terrain so I can annihilate this Incineroar with a stab max lightning because max quake at the moment isn't stab and glaring stuff is kind of sucks so i don't know if max quake will do enough to kill it so i'm gonna go for the max lightning into the incineroar and we're able to electrocute my daddy with the Max Lightning. And I'm actually surprised that killed because Galarian Stunfisk really sucks. Like, that special attack stat, ooh, even at plus two stat, like, I'm just surprised that killed. So we're able to tank a Grassy Glide with the Pink Urchin, and now our Dynamax is going to wear off with the uh, Galarian Stunfisk. Now, the issue is that I only have special attackers left, and this is in the Selfish Rillaboom, so even though we're in a much in, we have much more numbers than they do, it's actually going to take us quite a while to knock out this Rillaboom. So we're going to protect our Galarian Stunfisk right here, expecting the attack into it, as they do go for Grassy Glide, 
though it wouldn't have done too much because we got rid of the grassy terrain and now trick room's gonna wear off and now they're gonna go for the grassy glide into the the uh, cloud server we do carry the rindo berry because really boom is much more prevalent in the earlier vgc metas which is why rindo berry is on this cloud server. and now we're gonna go for the entrainment into the Galarian Stun Fist. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna give us the Mega Launcher ability, which will boost Terrain Pulse's damage tremendously. And now we're gonna go for the Stab Terrain Pulse with Mega Launcher, and it only does like half to Rillaboom, but keep in mind that's in the South Fest Rillaboom, and look at this, we're still Electric Type, we have Mega Launcher and Electric Terrain active, so yes, we are still Electric Type, and it's still Stab. And now Grassy Glide is going to uh, not knock out Claw here, very surprisingly. And now we can go for the Heal Pulse into the, uh, Obviously, the, the Sun Fisk. I'm not going to be disrespectful and attack into the opponent. I'm just going to go for the Terrain Pulse. Stab, Mega Launcher is able to two-shot the Rillaboom, and we're able to defeat our opponent thanks to Galarian Sun Fisk under Trick Room getting a bunch of boosts with Max Wake and Seal Spike, and then sweeping in the end game with Terrain Pulse. So hopefully you all enjoyed that battle. It was a pretty good showcasing of Galarian Sun Fisk, but we are not done. My next opponent today has a pretty uh, cool team. They have Clefairy once again with Sableye, Galarian Articuno, Stack Attack, Glastrier, and Incineroar. So overall, looks like mostly a Trick Room based team. But yeah, let's just get into this battle. My opponent, Schizophrantic, has a pretty cute trainer card. I'm hoping that we go into the Isle of Armor Stadium just because, um, you know, no, we don't. We, we're in the base of which Blue Stadium, whatever. They're going to lead off with Clefairy and Incineroar, which is kind of like a very passive lead, but it does have redirection, so it does kind of make me switch up my play, unfortunately. So we're going to set up the Psychic Terrain, which will transform my Galarian Sunfisk into a Psychic type. So we're going to set up the Psychic Surge, and we're going to, you know, Mimicry into a Psychic type. So that's good for us. And now my opponent's going to Intimidate, my Galarian Sunfisk, which doesn't matter at all. And now I think I do decide to Dynamax my Galarian Sunfisk. So yeah, we're going to Dynamax our Sunfisk. Sh show the animation once again, though I probably should have skipped it just because I already Dynamax animations take so long, but it's Galarian Sunfisk Dynamaxing, right? Like, we got to show it. So we're going to Dynamax our Galarian Sunfisk, our beautiful Pokemon. And I'm thinking the opponent might want to go for a follow me, even though like Incineroar is like one of the most passive Pokemon ever, <laughs> at least like by itself. So my opponent tries to go for Fake Out and Psychic Terrain, which is kind of a flop. And I'm going to go for Psychic into the Clefairy. I'm just trying to knock this thing out before, you know, it redirects all my attacks. So my opponent goes for a Minimize and I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. I fought, I'm fighting some demonic team right now. So I'll go for the Max Steel Spike into the Clefairy, trying to knock it out and it does get the knockout. Even without Stab, we're able to knock out the Minimize Clefairy with a critical hit as it deserves because if you try to use Minimize against me, you're gonna get crit. It's okay. You deserve that Clefairy. So down goes the Clefairy. I don't feel bad whatsoever. If they didn't click Minimize, maybe I'd feel bad, but yeah. Now they're gonna bring in the Stack Attacka and I do believe they Dynamax right here. And um, yeah, they're gonna Dynamax the Stack Attacka and I didn't cut this out either because I'm dumb. Oopsies. But yeah, they're gonna Dynamax the Stack Attacka and I'm like, okay, this could be kind of bad because uh, I don't have Stab Max Quake, so I won't be doing too much damage. And if this, you know, Stack Attack is weakness policy randomly, I'll probably just lose the game right here. So that's pretty bad for us because we don't have the weakness policy activated right now. But we actually carry the Fling Pattaya Berry to target into my Galarian Stunfist, which is currently a Psychic type, to of course nom 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 under Pattaya Berry. But more importantly, we're gonna activate our weakness policy and um yeah that's really good for us and now we can just go for the um we're gonna take a starkest larry at like breakfast because glaring sunfist doesn't give a shit after that seals like boost and now max quake into this giant ass stack attack that will one shot even without the stab on max on max quake and it's quad weak to the max quake so we're able to knock out the stack attack before it's able to even throw off one attack in its dynamax form so that's really good for us. Down goes the stack attacker, and I do believe the opponent's like, wait, I I'm kind of over, aren't I? So they're going to bring in the Galarian Articuno, and they're going to run away. So <laughs> we're able to defeat our opponent thanks to uh, Flank Bataya Berry Sunfist. Not the most competitive game, but I wanted to showcase it regardless because a minimized team got wrecked, so they deserve it. So hopefully you all enjoyed that little bit of a joke battle. I got to showcase the Flank Bataya Berry, and that's kind of like the main reason why I showcased this battle, because I wanted to showcase the Flank Bataya Berry tech. But yeah, let's move on to the next battle. My next opponent today has a really cool team. They have Chandelure, Primarina, Surfesh, which are some of my favorite Pokemon. And they also carry uh, Galarian Moltres, Clefairy once again, and Scizor. So overall, a pretty cool team. Let's just get into this battle against my opponent, who has a name I can't pronounce because I could barely speak English, let alone a foreign language. Forgive me, y'all. I'm really bad at speaking in general. 
people, so yeah. I kind of know a little bit of Spanish, but that's about it. So my opponent's going to lead off with Chandelier and Scizor, as I'm going to decide to lead off with Clawitzer and Stunfist the Opportunist once again. So I expect my opponent to want to go for Trick Room turn 1, but they actually just fire off a Heat Wave, which does do so much damage to Galarian Stunfisk. I was actually kind of shocked at that, but then I remember I'm like max special attack, so it's, that's not too surprising. So we're able to activate our weakness policy, thanks to my opponent, and now they're going to go for a dual wing beat into Clawitzer, as they're able to tank that really well because we're like a really defensive Clawitzer. And here I go for the Mega Launcher Heal Pulse into my Galarian Stunfist just to tank an attack from the Chandelier and recover my HP right. So we're able to get our health back and go for a plus two stab earth power into the Chandelier and we actually break it down to its focus sash. So um, overall, I think we're doing pretty good. We got all of our HP back and we got our weakness policy proc. So we're doing pretty good right now. Now I'm going to switch out and bring in my Pink Curtain to switch the typings out on my opponent. I really thought they would have Trick Room and go for Trick Room here, but they decided to not go for Trick Room. Maybe their allies switch with Flash Fire to go along with the Scizor. I'm not too sure what my opponent's strategy is, but we're going to change our typing to Electric with Mimic Reability. And now we're going to Dynamax our Sunfisk once again. And I didn't cut out this animation. I really should have. This, these battles are so old and I cut them, I cropped them like over a year ago, basically. So um, usually I cut out the max animation, but I guess I wasn't feeling it. So we're going to Dynamax our Galarian Sunfisk. And um, Galarian Sunfist as a Dynamax Pokemon is just so funny <laughs> because it's the only reason why this strategy works. Like Dynamax is such an unfun mechanic, but without Dynamax, there's no way that this strategy would actually function because Galarian Sunfist needs the extra power and bulk Dynamax gives it. So Dynamax can be really fun if you use it like in a fun way, but it's usually just used to make broken Pokemon more broken, unfortunately. But yeah, we're going to go for the Steel Spike, finishing off that Chandelier. I figured that with Dynamax, we could just tank whatever the opponent wanted to throw at us even though like both Chandler and Scizor are really really strong like after a Steel Spike Scizor's not really hurt in the Stun Fist and we're not taking super effective damage from the Heat Wave anymore so that's good for us down goes that Chandler and now they're gonna bring in their Surfetch so I'm really happy to see Surfetch I have no idea what it wants to do I'm gonna bring in my Tapu Lele expecting a potential close combat into my Galarian Stun Fist we're gonna change into a Psychic type which is good for us if they go for a close combat, but if they go for a, a, a bug move into the Sunfisk, that'd be really, really bad. But yeah, we're going to change into Psychic type now, as they are going to go try to go for Bullet Punch. We're able to protect ourselves with Psychic Terrain, and they do go for the close combat, as it does do absolutely nothing because of the Mimicry ability, changing us into Psychic type. And now what we can do is just go for the Max Mindstorm and just obliterate this poor Surfetch. I feel bad, Surfetch. I do. I'm sorry you couldn't do too much, but... Yeah, Surfetch gonna go down. Respect to my opponent for using Surfetch, though. It's one of the coolest Sword and Shield designs. And now they're gonna bring in the Galarian Moltres. So uh, I'm gonna switch out my Tapu Lele right now and bring back in my Pink Urchin, expecting them to want to Dynamax this Moltres right now because it's their last Pokemon that can really Dynamax besides the Scizor. And I don't see the Scizor being the best Dynamax option right now. So I bring in my Pink Urchin as we're going to change into an Electric type. And now they are going to Dynamax their Moltres like expected. Go for the Max Darkness this time around as opposed to Airstream because they figure, or they were playing around to switch into Pink Urchin, which was smart on their part, but we're still able to survive because Galarian Stunfisk is really bulky in Dynamax. Um, obviously it's not going to be tanking everything, but if you can change your typing and while you're Dynamax, you can actually tank most hits really well. So we're able to switch into a Wing Beat, get our um, Pink Urchin knocked out, but more importantly, we're able to go for a plus two Max Lightning into this Dynamax Moltres. And I do believe that just knocks it out in one hit. Yup, that Galarian Sunfisk is going to knock out that Galarian Moltres, showing who the cooler Galarian form is. Actually, Galarian Moltres is so cool design-wise. I'm not even in front. Meanwhile, Sunfisk is just that, but it still shows its dominance. It's true. Now we're going to bring Cloudser, and our Dynamax is going to wear off. And their last is Scizor. And we're currently Electric type with a defense boost, so I think we can survive whatever, and they just run away. So we're able to defeat our opponent. Thanks to the uh, Heal Pulse from Clawitzer mainly, which brought us back to near full HP, allowing us to max our Synthus. I wanted to showcase that battle and showcase the uh, Heal Pulse supportive capabilities from the Clawitzer. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed that battle. And let's move on to the last battle. My final opponent today, James, is actually packing a Series 12 team with Restricted Legendary. So we're actually a little bit outmatched because not only are we using Galarian Stunfisk and handicapping ourselves like that, we're also fighting a team that is meant for a format that this team wasn't built for. So that's kind of scary. But outside of that, we do have Rillaboom, which does combo really well versus Rain. And I'm hoping that gives us the edge to win out in this matchup. So yeah, let's get into this final battle. 
Against Jane, and I forgot, oops, I cut out their uh, trainer card animation at the start. Oopsies, whatever, it's not a big deal. They're going to lead off with Kingdra and Kyogre, as I decide to lead off with my Stunfist, the Opportunist, and Rillaboom. So, thanks to the Grassy Terrain, we'll be able to threaten out the Kyogre turn one, unless it wants to Dynamax, but usually Kingdra is the one that wants to Dynamax on these rain teams. So, we're going to set up the Grassy Terrain, which will transform Galarian Stunfist into a Grass type, which will be good for us when it comes to dealing with the Kyogre. But, uh, unfortunately, Kingdra can annihilate us with Max Airstream, so they're actually going to switch out the Kyogre, not wanting to take a Grassy Glide, bring in their Shedinja, as now they're going to Dynamax the Kingdra, and now I'm going to Dynamax my Galarian Stunfisk. As they're going to go for a Max Airstream, and they're actually going to target into my Rillaboom, as we're able to just barely survive, because we are an Assault Vest Rillaboom set, so we're able to just barely survive. And now what I can do with my Rillaboom, is I can actually go for the side U-turn, with my Rillaboom into my Galarian Stunfisk, and it actually does do a good chunk of damage because my Rillaboom is like max attack. But we're gonna activate our weakness policy because we're currently grass type, so U-turn gives us a way to proc our weakness policy in the worst case scenario. Although I will admit it was a kind of greedy because my opponent could have went for max airstream into my Stunfisk, but either way, I just wanted to get my weakness policy off, go for the max overrow into Kingdra, and do a really good chunk of damage. But I bring in my Clawitzer. And so I'm going to switch out of my Clawitzer, and I'm going to bring back in, or I'm going to bring in my Pink Urchin. I haven't sent it out yet. So I'm going to bring in Pink Urchin, change my uh, Galarian Synthesis typing to Electric, so I could take the follow-up Max Airstream or potential Max Hailstorm if my opponent wants to go for that. So uh, yeah, we're going to set up the Electric Terrain, changing us to Electric typing, and my opponent is going to click the Win button. And I'm like, oh, you bitch. Um, Shedinja commonly carries Ally Switch, though. Like, it's one of the most common ally switch users in the game because wonder guard ally switch is kind of crazy in doubles so we're able to face tank that airstream like nobody's business and unfortunately for my opponent i am the ally switch master and so go for the max quake into the shedinja slot reading into the ally switch and we're able to finish off the kingdra with the max quake so that's really good for us i felt really good after that read because uh, ally switch reads I, I just have a sixth sense for it you know but then other times I don't. It really is just like, Alice is just so dumb. But you know what? I love it. It's the reason why half my gimmicks work half the time. So you know what? I can't complain when I'm an ally switch abuser myself. But now in comes the Zation, and I figured the opponent wouldn't ally switch again because I just read them super hard, but I was proven wrong. They go for ally switch once again. And they click that win button, switch positions with the Zation, and now the Zation is going to choose to go for Behemoth Blade, targeting into my Galarian Stunfisk. But because we are currently an Electric type, we don't take that much damage from the Behemoth Blade. It still does like 40%, but that's just Zation's regular damage, even if you resist it. Now I'm going to go for a Max Steel Spike into the Zation, because I just wanted to get a defense boost on Pink Urchin, because I figured that Galarian Stunfisk wouldn't be able to just win the game on its own. Take the uh, the Heath Blade, go for the Max Steel Spike. Now I go for Rising Voltage, but my opponent dodges it with the Ally Switch. I was kind of just trying to hit both slots with an attack, playing around the Ally Switch, but yeah, playing around the Ally Switch is kind of annoying. So I'm going to protect right here because I figure they're going to target down the <laughs> the Stun Fist with the Zation as they go for Play Rough into the Galarian Stun Fist slot. And now they're going to go for Poltergeist into my Pink Kirchen, and they're going to Poltergeist reveal I am Life Orb. So yeah, this Pink Kirchen is meant to do a bunch of damage under Trick Room. We're able to tank the uh, the Poltergeist reasonably well, and I just go for Rising Voltage into the Zation. Even if they read it with Alice, which I was so over reading it. So down goes the Zation to the uh, Rising Voltage, which is good for us. So Pink Urchin actually gets a few kills in this video. And now my opponent's going to send in the... What does that say? The Kyogre. Yeah, they're going to send in Kyogre. And now I'm going to switch out of the Pink Urchin, not trying to die to a Water Spout. And I'm going to bring back in Rillaboom to change myself into a Grass type. So I can hopefully tank an attack from the Kyogre. That's the main goal, right? So, I'm gonna set up that grassy terrain. I'm still playing around this ally switch mind game, which is really frustrating because ally switch mind games are just like, normally like with regular Pokemon, at least they're taking damage, but with Shedinja, it's immune to like all the attacks in the game. So yeah, not, not all of them, obviously that's an exaggeration, but half the attacks in the game. They're gonna go for an origin pulse and they're gonna finish off my Rillaboom, I do believe. And my Stunfist just gonna barely survive but the rain's actually going to end very soon, so my Stunfist will be able to tank an attack from this thing. Unfortunately, I read the Ally Switch incorrect this time around, and I'm going to hit Nisha Ninja. Even I misread Ally Switch sometimes. It's true, it's true. So yeah, um, the rain's going to wear off, and I'm going to get some more terrain recovery, which will be nice for me. And now I'm going to send back in my Clawitzer, I do believe, yeah. I send back in Clawitzer because I want to, you know, heal up my Galarian Stunfist potentially. 
Also because um, I do have entrainment, so I actually can get rid of this Wonder Guard because I think that's my only way to get rid of Shedinja because I have Sucker Punch on my Pinkerton, but otherwise I can't hit this Shedinja. So that's really scary. They're going to hit me with an Origin Pulse as we're just barely able to survive with our Galarian Sunfist. And now I go for the Heal Pulse into my Sunfist this time because I want to get my HP back. I'm going to go for the Terrain Pulse. But they make the read again. I made, I misread Ally Switch again, so I'm kind of getting mad at myself. Like, ugh. I see what people mean with Ally Switch. It's the win button for real, for real. But um, my opponent's going to go for it again. Like, they're obsessed with Ally Switch because Shininja can't do much else in this situation. They can't Poltergeist into the uh, Galarian Stumpus because our weakness policy has been consumed already. So they're going to go for the Origin Pulse. It's going to hit into my uh, Sunfist, not do any damage at all. I'm assuming they're locked into Origin Pulse because they're not switching up moves, but I'm going to go for the Entrainment into the Shinji slot, but they just go for Ally Switch. Avoid the Entrainment, but they're just trying to avoid the Inevitable. As long as my Qualitic stays alive, I can just knock it out. I just go for Terrain Pulse and Entrainment just cover the Ally Switch, and we're able to kill the Kyogre, which is good for us. And now I believe, oh, there might be one more thing left. I kind of forgot. We took out Zacian, we took out King Joy. Yeah, this is the last Pokemon remaining. So um, I'm going to go for Protect with my Stun Fist right here because I'm trying to get like randomly killed by x Um They just go for Poltergeist, trying to finish off my Cloud here. But I just want to get this Entrainment into this annoying ass Shedinja because Shedinja's been Ally switching around me too, too long. I need to humble this Shedinja real quick. So we're going to Entrainment into the Shedinja, removing the Wonder Guard. And that's basically Checkmate because Shedinja can no longer solo my team anymore. And um, basically... My opponent's kind of screwed. Like, what can they really do at this point? They decided to play it out, though. Maybe they kind of respected my gimmick, which is cool of them. So they're going to go for the Poltergeist one more time into Clawitzer, as we're able to survive because Clawitzer's pretty tanky. And I'm going to go for the Entrainment into my Stun Fisk right here, just because I wanted to showcase, like, you know, the Terrain Pulse Mega Launcher combo to my opponent. Even though it was totally unnecessary, I could have just went for the uh, Water Pulse into Terrain Pulse, breaking the Sash and finishing off the Shedinja, but... You know, I wanted to showcase my tech, you know, I always get to showcase my tech to my opponents, make them a little bit impressed and realize, you know, how unoriginal they are in comparison to the god strategist wheels when evil, you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, the terrain's gonna wear off, unfortunately, so now I'm no longer a grass type. Oh, well, actually, I still am a grass type, because I got rid of my uh, mimicry ability, but I'm not gonna get the grass type terrain pulse anymore. But yeah, Poltergeist is gonna finish off my Clawitzer, which is fine. Because I decided to finish off the Shedinja with a uh, Steel Beam just for fun. So we get to see Steel Beam's animation targeting into Shedinja, doing that finishing one hit HP to finish off the Shedinja, taking half of our health. But we're able to knock out the Shedinja and defeat the Series 12 team with the Galarian Stunfisk meme team. So hopefully you all enjoyed that last battle. I got to showcase Galarian Stunfisk versus Legendaries, and it actually did well. But yeah, this is the rental code for the team if you want to try it out on the casual ladder. For fun, I don't recommend trying this out in ranked because there's legendary Ubers in ranked right now and you'll get your bussy destroyed. But yeah, here's the team. Thank you so much for watching till the end of the video. I love you all very, very much. And I'll check you all in my next video.